So today, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of Logic Pro for iPad. A couple weeks ago, Apple dropped Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro for the iPad, which is amazing. I was super pumped about this because when Lightroom came to iPad for the iPad Pro years ago, I jumped all over that. I loved working in the iPad, especially for photo editing. I think it's just, is just a match made in heaven. The pencil with the iPad and Lightroom, it's just mwah. So I was really excited to see how the pencil is gonna work with Logic Pro. It's funny, that's what I was most excited about, is how I get to use the pencil. But anyways, so just to give you a little bit of insight, I use an iPad Air. I bought this one a couple years ago, and it has the USB-C, so I could work it off an external if I wanted to. Uh, so I just plug it in, I can edit, everything's good. But how does this work for Logic? And does Logic Pro for the iPad have any benefits versus the desktop because this is something that I was thinking about a lot is like does it give me a reason to switch my workflow for audio production to an iPad doing photo editing absolutely so let's talk about some of the bonuses the first thing that I love is the fact that yes it works really well with the pencil you can go in there if you're doing automations you can click on stuff it's very easy so if you're into the pencil the other thing that I really liked is just how clean and how organized the interfaces, how it looks in response. They did an amazing job trimming down and making it very efficient for mobile. One thing about programming for mobile devices such as an iPad or a phone is that you have some very serious constraints. Like even though an iPad Pro or an iPad have a lot of oomph, there's still issues with memory and storage. So they really thought about that when they designed this, which is really cool. I really like their improved editing features, the way the editing is laid out versus what you get on the desktop. And the reason why I say that is I've always found Logic to be kind of clunky when it comes to editing, you know, selecting your right tool, marquee tool, dedicated. I just, I just never liked that workflow. So they simplified it and everything is right at the top here. I can select uh, my cut tool, I can put the marker down where I want and then swipe and that's it. It's easy, and then if I need to go back to the trim tool, I can do that. I can move stuff around. If you're a beginner or you just want to brush up on it, they give you access to a lot of good learning material. So you can go up to here and select this uh, question mark, which is like the help tool, and then select lessons. And there's a ton of lessons you can pick from. So depending on what you want to do, the, your type of workflow, there's lessons there that you can do. And basically, you click it, it downloads a session, you can work through that session uh, step by step, and it'll give you a really good grasp of how to work in Logic for the iPad. And there's also a lot of really good documentation in general from Apple on how to get going and edit and work in Logic. So if you have questions, you want to dive deeper, there's a ton of resources out there, which is really good. So at the bottom, you have like your your windows and your file management setups, which is just clean, easy to work with. You can select your file management section where it has your like loops, plugins, drag and drops, really easy. Um, information about the tracks laid out there. In the middle section, you just have your window management. So you have an edit f section where if you need to edit audio or edit a plugin or edit anything, you select on that. If you need to change parameters of anything, uh, the middle section, the middle button there, and then you have your mix window. So just like any mix window, uh, you have your layout, you can select your inputs, everything's really easy. Uh, you can do automations, just like you would see on a bigger desktop DAW, everything's laid out really nice. If you're doing things with like a MIDI instrument, they give you the great option of pulling up a MIDI controller, and then from there you can select the type of controller you want. So if you want to look like a keyboard or a guitar, they give you a drop down here and let you play with it. We've seen this in other formats, like in GarageBand and all that too, but they just did a really good job just laying it out when you download this app, there are a ton of plugins and a ton of effects and a ton of loops that you can download and start messing around with right away. Just make sure you have space for it on your iPad. I'm not going to lie, it takes up a lot when you download it. I think half of my storage space on here now is just dedicated to Logic. So just keep that in mind if you have an older or smaller iPad like I do, it's going to eat up storage really quickly. So you might want to think about working off an external for doing any audio production. Another thing that I really liked when I was working with it over the last couple weeks, I did some writing, I did some tracking, and um, the plug and play feature. I was using an SSL2 audio interface, just plug it in, it works, it sees it, no problem. You don't have to set up anything extra, it's just plug and go. Apple has really thought of making this as easy as possible for people to like just get up and going. So this is a great device if you do a lot of in the box production, if you're doing stuff on the road, if you're doing stuff on a plane, 
I'm not doing anything on a plane, but you can do that with this no problem. And if you're a Logic user, the session you work with can just be passed on to your desktop. So if you need to do more and that, then you have that no problem. So that's something to think about. If that's the kind of workflow that you do, you can start a project here, demo it out, get it the way you want, and then go to a bigger setup. So then you would have the external connections. You would have uh, a bigger storage. Now, with that said, there are a couple things that still make me question this. And it's not the application. Again, I think Apple did an amazing job programming this and just laying it out. The interface is great. It's very user friendly. Everything works. It gives me unlimited tracks. I can track as much as I want. Like this is incredible for an iPad. And I have to keep telling myself that, that for an iPad, this is really great. However, it's not the software that makes me question if this is something I would use. It's just the restraints of the device itself. So for the type of work that I do, I tend to do bigger tracking sessions. I tend to do bigger mixing sessions. I'm gonna to need to work off an external hard drive. This device has one USB-C. I don't think any of them have two USB-C ports. I could be wrong, I don't think the pros do. I think they all have one. So even if you have the top line stuff, you still only have one USB-C, which means you're gonna to have to buy a dongle. With that dongle, you can plug in your external hard drive. Well, then you're gonna to need to hook up an interface. So now you're gonna have your interface monitoring. You can monitor through your interface. I don't recommend using the Bluetooth uh, ear buds for this because I find that they do start to have a little bit of a latency issues. And then when you're working on a bigger project, you you do need real estate on your screens. You want to be able to see what you're doing. And that kind of begs the question, is this big enough? So I'm probably going to have an external hard drive, which makes me think, why don't I just use my laptop, which is what I would do. So um, for the type of work that I would do, I would just use a laptop. This would make sense if you're an in-the-box kind of producer, you're on the go, your main ecosystem is logic, so you can hand off back and forth, no problem. And you don't have to worry about meeting those restraint requirements, right? So if you're doing that kind of stuff, then yeah, I think for $4.99, this is a great price for a DAW. This is something that you can work, make your music, get it out there. Yeah, and it's gonna sound really good. However, if you're like me, where you need to have the interface, you need to be able to hook up, you need the, the bigger systems, then I don't think it's worth it. I think this is something that would be cool for like demo purposes or having a client play with something and then pass it to me so we can work on it on a bigger system. But I like working in my studio. I like having a studio environment. I'm not a big produce on the go kind of person. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do the subscription. Sorry, Apple. Because if I'm just using it to demo stuff out and write stuff, then I would just use GarageBand because GarageBand is still very powerful and it's free. So that makes sense to me. Um, you know what? I'm going to give this one more chance. This is what I'm going to do. This summer, I'm going to produce an artist and we're going to do something remote, kind of like what I did years ago with the Airbnb. I want to do that again. And we're going to use this. We're going to use a setup and I want to see, is this actually beneficial? Can I use this remotely? Having it free to use, external, with a pencil, does it make sense? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay. I'm gonna put my statement on pause until I do that. I hope this was helpful. I'm confused, but thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you out, kind of figure out, is this something that you would use? Let me know how you're using Logic Pro for iPad. Is this something that you're finding amazing and am I missing something? Anyways, this is my first impression of Logic Pro for iPad. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later.